I'm so pretty and he liked that. What is up again YouTube? It is me, Ariel, and I'm back with another video. Today I will not be frolicking around the woods in the neighborhood like I usually am, which is kind of a bummer honestly, but I've got a skincare video for you today. Today we are going to be reviewing Pacifica Vegan Collagen Eye Repair Cream. I chose this product because your girl needs an eye cream because I'm a 30 year old lady now. I thought the concept of vegan collagen was interesting. Turns out it's just a lab created protein they make. And we all know collagen heals the skin, but not the heart unfortunately. And I want to be realistic and review affordable budget friendly products that actually work. I'm going to tell you what all the herbal ingredients are in it and I'm going to do a little experiment and let you know if it works for my extremely dry eczema prone skin. I am only speaking about the plant-based ingredients because I'm not as well versed on the synthetic ingredients. It smells pretty sweet. Kind of vanilla-y. This is what it looks like. Oh, I forgot to read the directions. Gently pat onto dry, clean skin. Don't tug. So none of this. So the consistency is pretty silky. Um, I'm feeling a little bit of a tingle though, and I have super, super sensitive skin. It needs a trigger warning for every post it sees sensitive skin. I should have done a patch test. I'm so sorry guys. A patch test is where you put some product on your wrist and wait a few hours to make sure you don't have a reaction. So don't do as I do, do as I say. Yeah. I'm going to use this every day this week, and then I'll give you an update about how it's going. Okay, the flowers that are in this collagen cream are chamomile. Chamomile is excellent at lightening the skin, tightening the pores, fading acne scars, and being an all-around miracle skin soother. Calendula. Calendula is a cousin of chamomile and is even more of a potent skin and wound healer. In my experience, it has even improved the texture of my skin. Orange flower. Orange flower extracts not only reduces redness in the skin, but it also brightens the complexion. It's not to be confused with orange fruit, which will burn your skin, ouch, please no. Rosemary. The rosemarinic acid in rosemary not only reduces puffiness and swelling and soothes your skin, but it actually makes you smarter. And God knows I need all the help I can get. Brassica napus seed cake extract. Alright, this, I think they're being a little bit sneaky here. Brassica napus is a nice enough, though unfortunately named plant, that is treated with many, many chemicals to create the cooking oil we know today, canola oil. Canola oil is a highly refined, extremely cheap, not very good for you oil, is probably just used as a filler here. They're calling it pressed brassica napa seed cake oil to be sneaky because all the Whole Foods moms wouldn't want to buy this product otherwise. Jasmine. Here's a better one. The beautiful jasmine flower reduces stress just with its aromatic qualities and increases cellular turnover, which will heal skin very rapidly. Ooh, they have a radish root ferment filtrate. Fermenting foods does unlock some vitamins, and our skin loves vitamins. But wait, there's more. Radish root ferment is also called buconostock, which is a natural preservative, probiotic, that also prevents acne. That's so cool. I had no idea until I looked it up just now. Camellia seed oil. Camellia oil is made from the seeds of the green tea plant. It has a lot of vitamin A, which is anti-aging, and vitamin B, which is deeply nourishing to the skin. It mimics the skin's natural oils like jojoba. Hydrolyzed jojoba esters. That means jojoba oil, and that is well known for mimicking our skin's natural oils, and it's highly absorbable and a wonderful skincare product. Caffeine. Caffeine can promote blood flow circulation and reduce the appearance of under eye capillaries that causes that bruised, beaten look. I really should just bathe in coffee, but I guess it's more convenient to just put it in a cream. They, uh, they put some magic crystals in here. While my hippie side is totally on board with the magic of healing crystals, I have a feeling that they added this for some shiny effect. Ficus indica seed oil. Opuntia ficus indica is the prickly pear, and the prickly pear seed oil can help heal the skin quicker and increase cellular turnover. It's 12 in the morning and I'm watching a girl read off ingredients on her skincare box. 
The rest of the ingredients are just normal skincare, lipid-based and hydrating compounds with some emulsifiers to keep the cream all happy and blended together. This was $16, so even if it sucks, I'm not gonna cry about it. Here we can see some redness from eczema, some discoloration and some fine lines and under eye circles. A few days later. I wanted to show you what this awesome cream has done for my skin in just about six days I've been using it. I'll let you have a close-up on my dry ass skin. My review of the product is that while I didn't see a significant difference in my tiny little fine lines, I did see a difference in the overall hydration of my skin. Overall, I give it a 7 out of 10 for minor discomfort, decently effective, and cheap. So overall, for $16, I'd say go ahead and try it. If you've got dry skin like me, and you want to prevent some aging, and just look a little less beaten down by the world every day. I think with most products like this, you have to wait like at least two weeks to see a huge difference, but so far, I'd say it's helpful. Is it time for me to rant yet? Now, I have an issue with overpriced clean beauty products. I think that it is kind of stupid because there's no real regulatory regulations about them. It's just whatever the company wants to say to market their products so that you'll buy them. I totally respect the hustle and entrepreneurialism. I just don't like being tricked. So be very skeptical when you see any sort of claims made. One of my biggest issues with the clean beauty industry is that they do use chemical preservatives, often really harsh ones like sodium benzoate, because they have to. They don't even always put them on the label because since it's industry standard, they're not required to. So a product can be like 100% organic, blah, 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 but it'll still have these super harsh sodium benzoate and sulfate-like substances. And that could be, you know, causing a breakout or just irritating you. But then if they took that out, then your product might go rancid or mold. And that would cause an even worse, like, skin flare-up. So what are you going to do? The only real thing you can do is try it yourself and see if it works for you. I hope you enjoyed my rant. And in the next video, I promise we will get outside again. Because that's where I'm meant to be. This is my sweet little aloe baby plant. I just broke off one of its leaves. Thank you so much. I've got a little leafy. And I'm gonna compare my eye cream experience with this little aloe leaf. Okay. And I'm tapping it, because that's what it told me. Oh man, that's sticky. Okay, like 10 out of 10. This is a much better experience. <laughs> but if I did this every day, I'd have no more aloe left. Unless I had an aloe farm. Hmm. Thank you guys for liking and subscribing. <laughs> Don't forget to hit that subscribe button.